Welcome to another episode of Circuit Bread Practicals, where we talk a little bit more about that intersection between electrical engineering and electrician work, and frankly, more of just how to do electrician work from the viewpoint of an electrical engineer. Today, I wanna to talk about how to wire a switch, which has gotta be one of the most simple things that you can possibly do when you are working on the electrical in your house. So first of all, and this is something that I probably should mention all the time, but if you're gonna work on anything electrical, either one, know what you're doing, two, disconnect all of the wire and double check and make sure that your multimeter is set for AC when checking and all that sort of stuff because you do not want to hurt yourself. And if all else goes poorly, just get an electrician, even though this is simple enough that almost anybody should be able to do. So unlike an outlet, all a switch needs is to interrupt one thing that is flowing basically from your wall to your light or whatever it happens to be. Now, the most interesting portion is what happens in the box itself. Now, if you're just doing a, a replacement of something that's already in there, it's pretty straightforward. But like in this case, you can see there's actually a lot going on. This is not the simplest box and we debated actually finding a different one that would be a little bit more straightforward. But in here, we actually have several circuits coming in and going out. Power to our smoke detectors actually comes from this circuit, so for the entire house. And so because of that, we didn't want that to be attached to the switch, we just put the power all together. So on this hot line, I basically took the two coming in and made a pigtail right here. And then on the neutral, since we wanted all the neutrals connected, we just put them all together because we don't need to worry about that in the slightest. However, for the ground, since we had three wires coming in and we only have one switch that needs to be grounded right here, we did something, and I'm forgetting the word for this, but basically you put this little thing on there, you crimp the heck out of it, twist it, and then it is all grounded together, but you still have your one ground that you can use. Now, all we are doing is taking the power that is coming in and putting a switch between it and the light. Now notice we are doing this on the hot line. If you were to do it on the neutral line, you would flip the switch and it would turn off the lights, but then the lights itself would still be hot. It would be a floating uh, voltage, which you want to avoid. So whenever possible, which I can't think of why it wouldn't be possible, you will want to put your switch in here in the hot line. So let's just grab my strippers and really we don't need even my little tag anymore. And we will strip this off. If you've watched our ampacity video, you can guess that this is 14 gauge wire because this is only a 15 amp circuit because calculated that even with all of the lights on this floor on, we'd only be using about 300 watts, which is not very much. Now, I put that away, but I need to bring it back. We do have here, and we can use these little holes right here to shove the wire in, and you just shove it in, and then it doesn't pull back out unless you stick a small thing, either from a multi-tool or whatever, in there that releases it, and then you can pull it back out. My experience and experience of electricians I've talked to, those have a tendency to fail, and that does not sound like a good idea to me, so it's actually recommended that if you can, again, unless you're in a huge hurry, I don't know why you wouldn't, you just wanna put them in and then stick them in like right there. And it's a little bit of a pain at first as you get the hang of it. It seems straightforward, and maybe it is straightforward for competent people, but for some reason, it took me a while to make it so that I could do it consistently and not be fighting it horribly. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We can do more rigorous testing if we'd like, but we're in a bit of a hurry, just so this video doesn't get too long. You will wanna make sure that it's right side up. This is actually branded on the bottom. That's one reason why I'm not gonna use any of these switches because I hate it when people brand their stuff unnecessarily. So up here, we have the ground. Now again, as I've talked about ground in some other videos, you can see it is connected to the chassis. With the ground connected to the chassis, if this does come loose for any reason and it's flopping around in there and it touches this, instead of electrifying everything and you getting zapped when you touch the switch, it's sending it back via the ground, it's gonna create a short circuit and it's gonna pop the breaker, which is exactly what you would want to do in that situation, because then you'd be like, hey, something's wrong here, instead of, hey, I'm dead, that wasn't cool. I don't want that to happen. So. You always make sure you are grounding your stuff for safety reasons. And again, green for ground or bare copper in the wire itself. And as always, a reminder that ground in this case is just for safety. As electrical engineers, we would look at the neutral 
as our ground line. And then this is just there to make it so if things go poorly, it's less likely that we will die. Okay, so now that it's all in there, you can just take this and kind of bend and tuck. And that's where you want to have enough wire that you can work on it nicely when you pull it out, but also not so much wire that you can't cause it to go back in. So you have this screw right here and this screw down here, and they are just going to go in those holes. And as they go in, these two tabs are going to catch on the drywall, since we actually have drywall for this example, and it's going to hopefully be nice and tight and flat. And since there's a little bit of wiggle room back and forth, there we go. There's the wiggle room. If you find out you've installed it a bit like that, you can actually loosen it a bit and straighten it and then suck it down nice and tight and that will make it look nice. And you don't want these wobbly because nobody wants to go like this and feel the entire thing shake because that would, I don't know about you, but that'd make me feel weird. Okay, I'm not gonna waste my time putting that in. I would usually have a power tool to do that. Just zoop, zoop, make it a lot easier than me trying to do it by hand. And that's it. Hopefully this was very straightforward and helpful in showing you how to swap out a switch. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to learn more about these practical electrical engineering and electrician combos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will be getting very soon back to the electronics and all of the fun stuff that we love as electrical engineers. In the meantime, hope you have a great one. We will catch you in the next one.